Dive into God's Word. Dig a little deeper. Discover the Bible's message for you today. Pathway to Paradise Ministries presents Deeper, your daily Bible study with Dr. Tim Rumsey and Pastor David Salazar. Hello, thank you for joining me today. We are looking still at Daniel chapter 3, and we're looking today at the secret of such a faith. What enabled Azariah, Hananiah, and Mishael to stand for God in the face of a horrible death and remain true to him, uh, even if it meant their lives? We're going to be looking at some basic principles about what the Bible says about faith. What is true biblical faith? How can we have it today? What does it look like? practically in our lives. We're going to be looking at that after we pray. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, thank you for the examples and the instruction that you give us in your word. Today, Lord, we want a little clearer picture of what true faith is, what it looks like in my life, in our lives. And we thank you for providing that picture for us in your word. Please send your Holy Spirit to lead and direct us as we study. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to start by reading a statement for you from the book Desire of Ages, page 126. Faith is in no sense allied to presumption. Only he who has true faith is secure against presumption. Presumption is Satan's counterfeit of faith. Faith claims God's promises and brings forth fruit in obedience. Presumption also claims the promises, but uses them, as Satan did, to excuse transgression. Faith would have led our first parents to trust the love of God and to obey his commands. Presumption led them to transgress his law, believing that his great love would save them from the consequence of their sin. It is not faith that claims the favor of heaven without complying with the conditions on which mercy is to be granted. Genuine faith has its foundation in the promises and provisions of the scriptures. Again, that's from the book Desire of Ages, page 126. And perhaps you have heard the idea uh, shared that you know God loves people so much he's not going to let anybody be lost. He wants everybody to be saved. That is true. But, uh, you know, the idea is out there that because God is love, ultimately everyone will be saved. It doesn't matter what you do. You know, you don't need to worry. God will save you because he loves you. Friends, this is, first of all, it's unbiblical. Secondly, it's deadly and dangerous because it leads us down the road of presumption rather than down the road of faith. Faith, again, just reading from this statement, faith claims God's promises and brings forth fruit in obedience, as Jesus said in John 14, verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. Friends, that's not just a command, it's also a promise. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. You will do what pleases me if you love me, just like any husband or wife uh, will, or, father or parent will naturally want to do the things that please the person they love. Jesus is saying the same is true in our relationship. If you love me, You'll keep my commandments. It's a promise of what he'll do in our lives. Uh, Paul writes in Romans 1 verse 5 that we have received grace for obedience to the faith. There's a point and a purpose for God's grace. Yes, it is to forgive us of our sins, but it's also to lead us to the place where we can obey God through the power of faith in him. And so, as we look today at some basic principles of faith, we are not looking at principles of presumption. We are looking at principles of faith that, if worked out and lived out in our lives, will enable us to uh, lovingly and faithfully obey God in whatever he asks us to do. Let's dive into Hebrews chapter 11 as we look at uh, this uh, Faith Hall of Fame chapter and look at just a few of the verses here that help us understand a little more clearly what faith is. Beginning in verse number one, we read this. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Point number one, true faith requires us to believe and act in the unseen spiritual realm rather than merely in the visible physical realm. And this is a tough one for us human beings, isn't it? 
because by nature we uh, are comfortable acting, making decisions based on what we can see or understand ourselves. A great illustration of this that I ran across not long ago was the um, African impala, uh, kind of a small deer-like animal. And they can jump up to 30 feet in a single bound. They are amazingly fast, strong, agile, and swift animals. And they can jump very high as well. However, if you go to a zoo you will often see them contained in a pen with a wall only three feet high, something they could easily jump over. Why is it that they don't jump over it? The answer is amusing and sad at the same time. They're short animals, and they simply cannot see over the three-foot wall. And because they cannot see where their feet might land when they jump, they refuse to jump. Now, that might make sense (laughs) if you're an impala, But if you're a human being and God is calling you to follow him in faith, even when you don't know exactly what that might mean for you in your future, well, that can be dangerous if we refuse to follow because we can't see what it means to follow God. And so point number one here in Hebrews 11, verse one, true faith requires us to believe and act in the unseen spiritual realm rather than merely in the visible physical realm. Hebrews 11, verse 3 says this, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. The point, or one of the points here in this verse, is that true faith is rooted in our acceptance of God's role as creator of all things and in the power of his word. Now, why is this important? Well, as you no doubt know, Genesis, the book of Genesis begins by explaining how God created this world. And according to the Bible, God created this world primarily through the power of his word. In other words, God said on day one, let there be light. And all of a sudden, boom, there was light. On day two, God said, let there be a firmament or basically an atmosphere. And boom, all of a sudden, the water above and below separated and there was the atmosphere. And all the way through creation week, this is how God created, of course, until day six. But God spoke and it appeared. God spoke and it existed. God spoke and there it was. This is very different than, obviously, than the power of human words. You know, as I'm looking around the room, I can describe the things I see. You know, there's a picture on the wall. There's a door with a handle. There's carpet on the floor. There's a light above me. There's a chair across from me. I can describe what's already there. I cannot make things appear that don't exist simply by speaking, but God can. And this is one of the fundamental aspects of faith is that we learn to place our trust in the power of the word of God. In other words, find a promise in the Bible and claim it. And God wants us to do this. He invites us and challenges us to do this because there is power in the word of God. So you can't see what it's going to mean. It doesn't make sense to you. Great, that's exactly where God wants us to be so that he can work and create an answer where we don't see it. Maybe you're facing a situation in your life right now where you don't see the way clearly, where uh, you don't understand how it's going to work out, where you don't uh, see how it's going to work out for you if you choose to obey God. And God's promise and his challenge is, trust me, The power of my word can create the answer and the solution where you don't see it at all. Um, Well, let's keep moving. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 5 and 6, we read this. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Faith... uh, when we when we exercise faith in God, it's pleasing to Him, and uh, we want to please God. And so, because we want to please God, we will uh, work this faith muscle, if you will. You know, our muscles and our bodies don't get bigger unless we exercise and use them. And the same is true of our faith. We have to exercise it. We have to use it. And sometimes that can be painful. If you've ever exercised a muscle that you haven't worked out for a while, the next morning it can be quite sore. And sometimes exercising the faith muscle uh, is a little painful for us. It can be scary. 
But God promises that if, if we do that and we trust in him, it's pleasing to him and he will see us through. Now, verse six goes on. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. What an important point here in this verse. True biblical saving faith takes us beyond mere belief that God exists and takes us to the place where we trust in God's character, that he is loving enough, merciful enough, um, that he cares enough about us that he will do what is best in our lives. There's a big difference, friends, between simply believing that God exists, even between believing that he is powerful enough to do something, and, on the other hand, believing that he will do what is best because you trust in his character. True faith brings us to the place where we can have that kind of confidence in the character of God. Let's look at a couple of more uh, verses here as we have just a few minutes left. Hebrews 11, verse 7. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Very simple point here, friends. True faith is reflected in our actions. Noah didn't just dream about the ark. He didn't just draw up plans for the ark. He got out there and he built the ark. He invested himself, uh, he invested his family in this. In fact, we're told in the book uh, Patriarchs and Prophets that Noah used up uh, all of his own personal resources. He emptied his bank account to build this ark. In other words, he was totally, completely, 100% invested in obeying God. And um, God obviously uh, rewards that faith in the saving of Noah and his family. The next verse, Hebrews 11, verse 8, By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went, not knowing where his feet would land. Abraham says, Lord, I'm willing to follow. Let's go. And so true faith follows God's leading even when it doesn't make sense to us. And you better believe there were most certainly times in Abraham's life when he was wandering through the land of Canaan, wondering, Lord, where are we finally going to park this caravan? You know, where is this place? When do we get there? And yet, even though he probably had those questions at times, he still chose to continue following God. Finally, Hebrews 11, verses 24 to 27, speaking of Moses by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible." Final point about faith today, friends. True faith leads us to give up those things that stand between us and God's will for our lives. Is there something today that you, you know God is asking you to surrender to him, to stop doing, to get out of your life, to remove from your house? Um, is there a relationship that needs to go? Or is there something that you need to start doing and you know God is asking you uh, and so far you have not done it? True faith says, Lord, I'm willing to give all of this to you. I will give up those things that stand between me and you so that I can have this relationship with you that I so desperately need. Well, friends, we're out of time. May your faith increase. May your experience with God deepen each and every day. And I hope to see you again tomorrow. Deeper is a production of Pathway to Paradise Ministries. For more Bible study resources, including books, DVDs, and study guides, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. To support this ministry with your tax-deductible contribution, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. That's 855-447-8788.